Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're on the web at smartwatchticks.com and this looks like a normal lympho box and it feels like a normal unboxing of a watch, but it's not. Inside this box is such new technology that when they write the history of smartwatches, they're going to start a whole new chapter because of lympho and because of the LEM9. This it's got so much new technology in it, it just makes me squeal. <laughs> it does, but I won't do it on camera. I don't want to scare you away. AliExpress, Lympho's official store, really right now, the only place you can get it, and you can't even get it. It's in pre-sale, and it's all coming up soon. Depends on when you're watching this video, but if it's in middle of March to end of March 2019, um, just get ready, folks, because this is a good one to buy, and you're going to get a pretty decent introductory price on it. What has it got in it? Well, first of all, let's start out with a 1.39-inch larger screen display, 454 by 454 AMOLED. Really beautiful. 600 milliamp battery, 5 megapixel interesting front camera you'll see about that and again when we're filming this it's before uh, it begins and the video is going to be up before March 28th hopefully a lot of you will see it and have your finger on the button to get ready to pre-order um, it does 4G as most of these watches uh, do right now and it does something very unique we have not seen on any other watch and that's using the capabilities of two different CPUs your standard MTK um, 6739 processor and a very low power, basically powers a, a, a watch face uh, chip in here. So you can have it in a, uh, a standard watch mode that does nothing more than tell the time, but it's always on and wow, the combination is sweet. Wait till you see it in action. You use a nano SIM if you want to make calls. It's got one gigabyte of RAM, 16 total storage. That seems to be the sweet spot. Supports all of these uh, operating systems, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Has a heart rate monitor and multi-sport mode. We'll be talking more about that. Uh, look at this. Five days standby in what they call bracelet mode, which is just with the time showing. Uh, from that 600 milliamp hour battery and hopefully like most of these about a day or so of uh, regular use when you're actually using it as an Android smartwatch and uh, the screen is different it's really uh, well you're gonna see it in action in a minute in fact let me show you a picture from their marketing materials which is a printout you can't quite tell the brilliance you really have to see it on your computer screen or your phone screen but the muddled colors of a standard 1.3 inch 390 by 390 or even a 1.39 inch 400 by 400 is not as brilliant as this new one at 454 by 454. You know what that size lets you do? That extra 54 millimeters, it lets you get full edge to edge. You're going to see it in this watch. It really feels big, but it's basically the same 1.39 inches but you're getting all 1.39 inches out of it. No bezel hiding 54 millimeters worth of it. Anyway, it's great. Uh, high contrast, high chroma, high definition. You want to see it? Me too. Let's just from appearance look at the new things. New. Look at the two-tone capability. What was that? That's a camera. Yeah, that's another new thing. It's not up here at the top. Buttons are on the right. Usually it's over here. This camera is down below and pointed toward the ground. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too. Um, this one, uh, like I said, comes in blue. And you've got markings around the bezel and the power and back buttons identified. Let's go ahead and take the screen cover off so we get deeper into it. Watch this. The band is even different. A lot of this technology you're going to start seeing on other watches, so get ready. Like I said, we're rewriting a new chapter now in smartwatch uh, development. With bands, you're going to have this last little clip thing here. 
inside of a little edge. You see how it's it's kind of floating inside of here? So it's at the very end of the watch. So if you want it there to hook in quickly, you can, or you can slide it out of there and use it separately if you prefer that. That notch is brand new as well. The material is a sturdy TPU type material and it's organically correct, that's all I'll say. It's supposed to be helpful for your body if you're sweating and using this watch. On the bottom, you've got the cover for the SIM card, Nano SIM, heart rate monitor, charging um, pins for a dock that it uses. It says LTE and 4G. It's in here solid. The bands are not removable. However, however, they're claiming IP67 waterproof with this watch. That's another new thing. We're seeing a watch with non-removable bands that you can actually dunk in water. Speaker on this side. What else is in the box? Let's find out. The dock. It's a round charging dock. And it just magnetically couples to the back. Like so. Are there any wires that will work instead? I don't know. We're really just unboxing this thing and getting started. That'll all be in an upcoming uh, video. You've also got the charging wire, which is just your micro uh, US, uh, USB cable that you simply plug into the dock. So you can easily take this thing with you. In fact, if you wanted a Big Mac, you can actually wear it, I imagine, on your arm and uh, you could charge it on the fly. That's wild. Um, anyway, you, you, you uh, have a separate wire, so it's not attached to this thing. Um, so that makes it a little bit more useful. You have an extra a screwdriver and a few extra screws that you can use then to remove the SIM cover on the back to set it up for cellular communications. And then you've got a user's manual that's still in process. This is the Chinese version. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but this whole thing, everything you're seeing here is totally prototype. It's the commercial packaging but it's really a work in progress. As you could tell, it's not even going to be, they're not even taking orders till the end of March. But we're really fortunate to have this here to premiere it for you. However, there are some things that, you know, are, are not quite there yet that they're still working on, like maybe putting the picture <laughs> on the cover. Here's the uh, temporary beginner's manual that they're working on. And it talks about charging. Oh yeah, okay, Look, looks like it came right off the copy machine and got trimmed down. Here's a menu guide, watch faces and such. Now because it's using the standard Android 7.1.1 and it tethers to the standard Y Watch 2 app, a lot of what you see in the operation of the watch is identical to what we've seen uh, before on many, many, many of these watches. Uh, so there's nothing new there. But there is a few, um, there are a few new developments to show you that set this watch apart. Okay, let's find out what those are. Let me clear everything out. It's already charged up, so I'm going to power it on. Look at the screen, edge to edge, really beautiful. Look at the colors, blooming brightly, very nice. If you're seeing a little flicker on the screen, I am in the camera. That's not in the watch. It's the beat frequency between the recording and the refresh rate, I guess, of the screen on the watch. In terms of the whole placement, they're pretty decent. Runs all the way to the end and back so that you should be easily able to put the watch on. Do that while it's booting up. Ho oh, ho, it's up! So I'm just about in the middle of the of the band. This is what it looks like on your speakers right here on the side. It's a little on the thick side, as most of these watches are, to support a 600 milliamp hour battery. But um, it's got great capabilities to it. There's our first watch face, and it's animated. 
It's one of the new features that Limfo is, well, an old feature they've done on many, many of their watch faces, but it's a new watch face for this watch. Let's run through the layout. As in all standard Android 7 watches, we slide down, we get this page, but notice the vibrant colors. In fact, it's a little subdued purple on the camera compared to the deep purple I'm seeing here. Come over here, you got your, your typical um, silent mode, brightness, twist, twist your wrist to see the time, airplane mode, cellular communication, location services, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi here. Whoops. Your clear all, it wipes out any background apps that are running, music player, and then on your last page, You've got the weather in your area, and now, finally, we're getting both centigrade and Fahrenheit and uh, details on it, which is really, really sweet. Okay, that's what happens when you swipe down. Go over to the right, you'll get notifications. Go up, you're going to get your step count for the day. We've seen all of this. That was a chart of the last five days. This is your calories, kilometers, and steps. Haven't used it yet, so there's no data there. And then when you go to the right, you get to the app drawer and right again, and you get to the overall fitness section. Very familiar, right? So, and all the same, um, same apps or same activities are listed here. So one of the burning questions in all of these watches is, are the ones that involve step, like running, walking, and even cycling that involve distance, are they tied to GPS? And unfortunately, in the, in the prototype, they're not. If they were, this location services uh, would be flashing until it acquires GPS. And it might even tell you to make sure you turn on GPS before you begin. But because it starts counting directly, it means that the data will be based on the uh, pedometer, your step count in here, and probably just some combination of heart rate to give you calories burned for the cycling. Uh, you'll notice also in the literature, it doesn't say that it's highly accurate data. It's uh, giving you reasonable data for what you get in the um, fitness. So we have that loose integration of fitness in here, not tight, not GPS based. But again, you may be able to download third party apps like Strava and others that could interface. We don't know yet with the GPS to give you more accurate data. When you get to the apps, they're the standard contingent of contacts, phone, and messaging from the SIM card. There is no Bluetooth calling in this one or any Android 7 level watch yet. They haven't cracked that code to put Bluetooth calling. So you have to use a SIM card if you're going to make and receive calls. You've got your settings, which is important. We'll get back to there. Browser and downloads, calendar and clock. The camera, we're going to come back to that, and gallery for the pictures, music. you got all of the other things, basic. Heart rate monitor on the back, we've seen that. There's the fitness, exactly the same as what we just went to. The overall weather, voice search, Play Store maps, an operations guide in here. The App Store, different than the Google App Store, but the one where you can get um, Facebook and WhatsApp and some of those things. The Assistant, which ties you to the Why, Where, To app. And we've done an entire video on that, so I'm not even going to cover anything related to tethering. It's already been done, and it's exactly the same on this watch. You do have the Google Translator built into this one, and this new thing called Long Standby. It says this watch can be used for much more time in long-term standby mode, and your smart mode can be activated by a press on the power button more than three seconds. So we're going to activate this process. Can you read the fine print? Okay, I'm going to say check mark, and it's there. Now it's going to reboot and apply that um, action. Ta-da! There we are. We are now in the bracelet mode, the standby mode that's got the time, the date, your step count, calories burned, and a measure of your battery. Now, some of this stuff is still in the final stages of integration. In a crazy kind of way, these guys are like open brain surgeons. 
The left brain, being the Android operating system, is fine-tuned. The right brain, being more just a bracelet, a creative look at time, works fine on its own. But it's that bridge between the two to be able to pass your fitness data over that they're working on. You did see the numbers change, so it can update on the time. But this particular mode is always on. It doesn't go off. Nothing you do turns it off. It's not that bright, so it's not going to be really bright outdoors. It's bright, so it's going to be a little bright indoors compared to the ambient background, and you can't turn it off. You have to press and hold for three seconds. What it is in now is the standby mode availability, which if I press this button not for three seconds, that reboots the watch. But if I tap it, I go into that mode. You can't activate anything. You can't do anything. It is just a bracelet mode with just the time on it. But if you tap the button lightly, you come right back here. Nice, huh? And it's back into the watch face and your full use of the watch as an Android watch. That's the long standby. All right. Those are all of the stock apps that come with it. But I wanted to show you also in settings a couple of things. Sound is basically the same, but display. Display is different. Look at this. We got the brightness and the sleep time, and we have the always time. Now, on the other Android watches we've looked at running 711, when you turn that on, you got a black and white analog watch face, right? Not so with this one. The always time switch turns on and off that bracelet mode, just like we saw here. So when the watch times out, let's see if it's off, it'll come back to this uh, display. And when uh, the watch wakes up, it'll come back to the regular time. Just like what you saw with the always time mode on the uh, other ones. Now, if I come in here and I turn it off and I turn the watch off, it stays off unless I turn it on. Okay, so that deactivated that process of the long standby. Okay, that was one thing to show you. That's revolutionary and new. So is the little way they've done this on the band and the placement of the camera. <sighs> okay, I really don't like doing cameras, because especially front-facing ones, because you get to see me. And now on this one, unfortunately, you get to see more of me. Yeah, I played with it a little bit. Um, hello, everybody. That's my shirt. <laughs> That's my shirt pocket. That's what you get when you look at it. Normally, the front-facing camera is right here, yeah? And um, you just look at the watch, and you can see yourself, and you see the picture of the other person. This one, the camera is here, and it's pointing up towards your heart or other things. You have to literally... How do I do this? There it is. Wow. Okay. You see how I'm looking at the watch at the side. Kind of best if I have it on my arm, I guess. Whoa. How do I do this? So awkward. Um, there's the camera filming. There I am kind of in the corner, but I've got bad reflections from outdoors. Let me get a good position that works. All right. There really is no good position that works where I'm at right now. Um, I've got a challenge with reflections, which I think you will too. It's much easier if you can look straight onto your watch, I feel. But the, because this is like a 45 degree angle, you're going to need to do your video calling and your picture taking if you're doing selfies with it turned to where other people could look straight into your watch and see you upside down. And you see yourself at an angle. Fortunately, the screen is great for side viewing. Look at that. Look at that. You can really see it nicely. But the positioning, well, awkward would be a tame word I would use. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but it, uh, 
Yeah, ah, can't even get me in here. How do I? There, there. All right. I, I wanted to take a picture. Hi. And I want to shoot a video. Oh, notice it got a lot closer and bigger when I'm shooting the video. I know you guys can't see me, but I'm trying to turn it. Oh, there. All right, enough. Let's stop the video and save it. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, a lot of work we need to do with mastering that camera placement. It's brand new. It might be perfect if you're out walking around and you just twist your arm and you can take a selfie or do whatever. Uh, just make sure the bottom of your chin is clean, okay? Here is uh, the video. Anyway, uh, you can hear the audio out of the speaker. It's adequate. And of course, it's recorded on the video clip. So if you transfer it out, it should be fine. The other thing is the photo. How is this handled and how big is it? Let's look at the details. It's a 2448 by 3264, which is like when you multiply that out, that's eight megapixels, isn't it? So it's like a true five megapixel camera. If that's correct, then this is one of the newer camera modules that's gonna give you great high resolution pictures. Maybe you're gonna to wanna to slap this thing on upside down to take your pictures. I don't know, you know, have it as uh, uh, the old S8, if you remember way back four years ago, put its camera here. And some of them even had the camera in the band itself. Um, they were really, really low res, but they shot pictures kind of at this direction. This is that same concept, but facing um, forward. Wow. If any of you know of third-party apps that you can install that turn your screen 180, so you could literally wear this thing upside down and all the functions would work upside down, uh, let us know in the show notes, because I'm getting a feeling that I might want to wear this watch backward if I'm going to do any filming. So we see that, um, the size of it. Now, the other question is zooming. Okay, I did a double tap, double tap, and back again. Go away, details. Okay, let's uh, come here to my nose. Double tap, double tap. And you can move it around on the picture. So you have those double, double tap ranges. And pinch and touch, pinch and zoom. Yes, look. I can zoom way in. So it's got multi-point uh, capability. I wonder, when you play the video, can we zoom it? No. No, just on the pictures. Okay, so that's the camera. The gallery would have that, uh, that image in there as well. And... In terms of more on the settings, let's go quickly through the rest of that. We saw the display, your app style list, and your connections, which include Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, the hotspot, sorry, I'm off camera capability, airplane mode, GPS. If you have your cellular um, SIM card in there, there's your cellular stuff. Gestures. Here's our uh, raise your, twist your wrist to see the time and the basic pedometer settings that you can turn on and off for battery power savings. Date and time is all the same. You do have 24 hour and 12 hour time. Oh, however, at this point, I noticed, oh, I don't, I'll just tell you, when you switch into the ambient mode, um, the bracelet mode, they're calling it on here, the time is in 24 hour mode. I'm not sure if it's gonna be able to be switched from 12 to 24, 24 to 12, um, I'm also not sure if you're going to be able to select multiple watch faces or you're just going to have that one face. Those are all questions that will be answered soon. Uh, this is the prototype watch that we're working with at this point. We definitely will be doing a follow-up video as some of this becomes more clear to let you know. But if you like the technology the way it is now, um, this is a great time to pick it up. In more, this is where you have all these settings that you can um, mess around with. And then, of course, when we get into the About the Watch, 
you've got the number, the, or the name, LEM9711. Here's our kernel version and build number. I expect to see lots of firmware updates to this one because of how new the technology is. So check that out. Also, just by observation, on this watch, because of the size of the pixels, the writing is really small. See that? I'm not sure if we can get into the developer mode um, area where we can uh, access accessibility, where we can do the triple tap to zoom. That would be nice. I hope so. I'll have to try that in the advanced uh, video. And uh, that would make it easier to read. But it's really small print right now uh, when you get deeper into all of this stuff. Okay, that is a quick overview. Oh, and the watch faces? There's quite a few new ones in here that are fun. Let's walk through those quickly. Here you get this one. This is going to give you arcs showing your battery power and step count. That's kind of a fun one. And being edge to edge, it really looks like a dramatically large screen. Here's a very unique, unusual watch face. The time is with this needle going around here. Sorry, I'm a little hoarse, you guys. <laughs> it's better to be hoarse than a cow. And there we've got kind of a, a, a light shining on this watch face. And the time was very interesting over there. Here's gold with some more number layouts. Inner, outer, and outer ring. More numbers than you can shake a stick at. Well, okay, I'll just go through a few of them like this. Those are all analog watches. We've seen a lot of these before. I think there's a couple up here that are new. There's an interesting round dual circle face. Here's some more. So lots of interesting uh, watch faces come stock on this watch. Yeah. Of course, I got the blue one, but I don't know if they have one for a red bezel, but that's bright. Look at, look at how brilliant the colors are on this watch. Really nice. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. I don't have the uh, watch faces set at the, uh, the hands set at the typical 10 10. It's almost noon here, so you're getting a real, everything's different angles on this watch face. Fun. Here's a deep blue color with silver, kind of. I think this would be a fun watch. I think it's got a lot of potential. Represents a lot of brand new technology for us, especially this new bracelet mode. As that improves, and we're going to see it come on to other watch faces, um, I'm sure watches in the future, uh, it's going to be the next wave of technology. These, with the little minus sign you see up above, are all watch faces that you can download uh, from the little plus sign at the very end. And you all know how to do that, right? I just skip over. You've got this. You hit the plus sign. You're on the internet on Wi-Fi. And you get the whole streaming display of all the different watch faces they have available. You pick one you like, like that Snowflake one. It says it's downloading right here. It's been downloaded. You come out of there, and there's that watch face running on the watch. Plus user-created uh, watch faces. Haven't tested that yet, but they should be installable. But because the screen is a different size, they may look different on this watch. Again, we'll do that in a future video too. All right, before my voice gives out completely here, let's go over it one more time. You are watching Smartwatch Ticks. This is the Limfo LEM9. This is the pre-release prototype we've been examining. It incorporates two processors, one a standard Android one for doing all your Android apps and whatnot, and a second one for giving you a bracelet display, a color, um, long life, low power time display, and nothing more. But you can easily switch between the two modes. If you're interested, jump over to the AliExpress store, pick this thing up on um, pre-release. They'll be shipping, I believe, in early April. And you should be able to pick it up in just a few days. Thanks for watching. Come on back. And thanks for the thumbs up and the subscriptions. It allows companies like this to send us their stuff when it's new because they know you guys are watching and enjoying it. So really appreciate you being here. We'll see you again soon.